Okay, so now I'm going to cover fitting the timing gear uh, to the engine. And one slight problem you might notice is that I've already fitted the timing gear to the engine. This is because what's happened is, unfortunately, I have seemed to have accidentally deleted all the videos of me fitting the timing gear uh, to the engine from my computer. And so uh, I can't do it. So I'm going to have to sort of like reenact it. That's all I can do. Okay. Now, in order to reenact it, I'm, I'm not going to take all the down wheels off because I, I can't be bothered. But, I, you know, I think you'll still get the idea. I am going to partially dismantle it. The problem with that is that it doesn't like going back together in, you know, with, with all the wheels in place. But I've removed, I've already removed the circlip, etc., from this intermediate sprocket. I'm just going to take it off. Uh, it's going to be hard to get back on. It will slide off, but it's got to be in exactly the right place to go back on, which is a problem. Anyway, so let's imagine that none of that's there. <clears throat> so the first thing I did is to fit this pinion, the drive pinion to the crankshaft. Now, what that, that has a spacer behind it, which goes on. So you slide the spacer on first, then you heat up this uh, pinion to help it expand because it's very tight on this shaft. And there is a keyway. It's actually there. There's a keyway and on the crankshaft is a key. In our case, we never took that key out. It just stayed in the, in the crankshaft. So you then line up when it's really, really red hot or as hot as you can get it. You then line this pinion up, slide it on and with the help of a dear old lump hammer and drift, in our case, a dear old box spanner, you knock, you slide it on to the crankshaft, making sure, obviously, that the keyway here lines up with the key and then it should go on. Um, but it is, it is difficult because it is a very tight fit. And it, if the keyway doesn't line up exactly with the key, then it won't go. So you... It's awkward. But anyway, that's what you do. Heat that right up. Then <clears throat> hopefully there'll be a photo here somewhere of my thumb because I heated that right up and then I picked it up with my gloves, my heat proof gloves, not realising that there was a hole in the thumb. And I picked up this pinion to put it on and I've now got the <laughs> burn marks of the teeth of the pinion in my thumb. Okay, so you get that pinion on. Now that pinion has a single dot on it, uh, which I have highlighted with Tipex. Okay, I think it's nine teeth round, anti-clockwise, from the keyway. But there is a single dot, all right? You make sure that single dot is where I've left it now, uh, absolutely uh, vertical, facing straight up, okay? Uh, I'm not going to turn things around because if I do, I'll never get I'll never get this this one back on again. Mm. All right, but you need to turn the crankshaft until that white dot is uh, well, there's a punch mark. I've I've made it white until it's vertical. All right. Then uh, what then what we do is we would then slide this intermediate pinion on. I'll come back to that in a minute, and then put on the two cam shafts. But obviously, they're, they're, the cam pinions, they're already on and they're done up to 75 pound foot pounds. So I don't fancy taking them off again just for a video. Sorry. OK, but let's, let's imagine these two aren't there. We then come to uh, the intermediate uh, pinion. Now hopefully you can see this clear enough. There are two dots. I've highlighted them. Two dots either side of one of the... Uh, of an empty tooth. Those two dots go either side of this dot on the crankshaft pinion. Then to the top right, there is a dot and that lines up with the exhaust uh, crank, uh, pinion. And then on the left, just to confuse everybody, I hope you can see this, there is a dot, which is not highlighted on here, and a dash. Hopefully you can see that. I'm just looking at the camera. So there's a dot and a dash. Now that's that's it's purely there, I'm sure, just to confuse everybody. 
Now, in truth, I'm assuming that that, that there's two marks there because it's used. That this this pinion is used for a different engine. I don't know, but the main thing is, as far as we're concerned, we use the dash on this left hand side for the inlet <coughs> and not the dot. Okay, so these two line up either side of this dot. This dot lines up with that dot. This dash lines up with that. Okay, we'll come back to that in a minute. Then <clears throat> we've got the actual camshaft pinions. Now, the camshaft pinions are actually the same. It's the same pinion. Both pinions, you will find that they're marked for inlet and exhaust. You'll, uh, you'll find on it now, I don't know if the camera picked this up because they are very faint, but on this one that says inlet, that would be, be where the inlet is. Uh, and on this one, I can't quite see it. I know it's stamped for exhaust. So you just use the inlet markings on this side and the exhaust markings on that side. Actually, they are the same. What's happened on these particular pinions is the previous owner has overstamped, they've double stamped or triple stamped to make sure there's no errors made. So there are actually three dots and I've highlighted one of them again with Tipex so you can see it clearly. And that, and there is a little engraving, you probably can't see it on this, it says in. So I know that that mark there is for the inlet, because somewhere else on here is marked X, and there'll be another dot, which is for the for this side. And again, I've highlighted this one, and here it says, you won't be able to see it, but it says EX for X. I know that's the lineup for X. And over here it's inlet, and there's actually a dot there. If I was putting this on the inlet side, that's where I'd be lining it up. Okay. So uh, what we would do is we put this on and then there are three keyways in these uh, pinions and there is a key on and there's a key on the uh, each camshaft. So then you line up the key with the keyway that's in line with the timing mark. So behind here there's a keyway here and on the camshaft and that keyway lines up with this dot. And on this camshaft, there's a keyway here, which lines up with that dot. Because there are actually three keyways on each of these uh, on each of these pinions. There are three keyways, and so you need to use the keyway that lines up with the, the right timing mark. Very briefly, without overcomplicating things, there are th why are there three keyways on these? There are three keyways so that you can actually move these pinions round to, to get absolutely perfect ignition timing. Uh, sorry, valve timing. Because what happens is, if you left this camshaft still, pulled the pinion off, turned it round, so the next keyway, there are three keyways at 120 degrees, turned it round so the next keyway lined up here and put that pinion back on, okay, the the, the camshaft's still in the same position, but you've moved the pinion round. It actually changes the timing slightly because, very cleverly, that keyway actually is a third of a tooth different than this keyway. So I'll be able to move, picking this pinion out, moving it round and putting it back on. I'd actually move the camshaft a fraction, a third of a tooth. It's something like five degrees it works out at. And there, by carefully measuring when the valves open and so on, you can then use that to actually set the valve timing to its absolutely maximum efficiency. And as these were used for racing engines, and as there's two cams, you can do that. You can set this cam uh, by, by using a different slot on the pinions. You can do that. We're not going to do it. We're just going to use factory settings, which is fine. If you're racing or you really want high performance, then you definitely need to do that. Factory settings, you know, they're fine. They can be absolutely, you know, spot on maximum, but they can also be poor because they're factory. They're, you know, there's a lot of play in the system. You know, they didn't have time to set everything up perfectly, but for our purposes, they're fine. Okay, so I've put that on. Put that on. Okay, I've not. I assume I've not done the nuts up yet. I then going to put. I'm going to put some on anyway. I've already done this, obviously. I'm going to put some lube back on the intermediate uh, shaft oh damn sorry and then i'm going to try and put this back on but of course i would put this back on before these two are on 
And now actually trying to put them back on with all three are already on there is a bit of a damn nightmare, especially when I accidentally moved that one. Because they've got to be absolutely exactly aligned or they simply... Right, I've got them, uh, I managed to get that intermediate pinion back in. Obviously there's very little play between the teeth, so actually putting it in in the middle of the other three uh, pinions is very difficult. But there are those two dots in, in between that dot, the dash lined up with the dot, and the dot lined up with the dot. Okay, then on the intermediate pinion, <coughs> we put the thrust washer on, and then we've got a circlip, which is bound not to go on because it's on camera. <coughs> and that circlip goes back on here. Oh, yes, it does. Good. Good, good. We would then do up these uh, these two uh, camshaft pinion nuts. Now, left hand thread, and they've done up very uh, uh, high torque, 75 foot pounds. And I've also put on some uh, Loctite sealant. You don't need to put any on, but you know. Why not, in my in my opinion? So then, what I've done is I've got a, an adjustable spanner on the back on the crankshaft, I'll, and that is locking the engine. It's just going to turn the engine around a bit. I'll show you that in a minute because I don't want to take the camera off the tripod for now. And then I've got my torque wrench. I'm just going to reenact this, and you need a good torque wrench that that is able to work left hand as well as right hand. And then, so it's 75 pounds torque. And then when the engine locks, there we go. Okay, and when the torque wrench clicks, you know that that's done up tight. And that is basically the engine timing. And just to, to let you know, so this is how I lock the engine. Simply a uh, adjustable spanner uh, on the crankshaft and then Here's the uh, uh, intermediate shaft for the, uh, what's that for, the oil pump, is it? Yeah. And that just stays really on the crankcase, so that's a handy shaft. And that wrench locks up the, uh, that locks up the engine. Okay. Uh, so I hope that's made sense. I'm, I don't know, I'm, I'm sorry I lost those, uh, lost those videos. But the basic engine timing, the engine valve timing is, is pretty straightforward on a triple, okay? The only curveball being you use the dash and not the dot on the intermediate sprocket for the uh, inlet timing. There you go, done and dusted.